I remember when my son was in junior high. I introduced him to a man by the name of Roland Story, who was the president of an organization called the Free Enterprise Institute. So now, my son is in junior high, and he's reading Milton Friedman. He's reading von Mises. He's reading Hayek. He's reading Adam Smith. He's reading Frederick Bastian. And he's doing speeches on free market economics. And as he enters high school, now he's reading the Federalist Papers, he's reading the Anti-Federalist Papers, and he memorizes, along with four other kids, the entire U.S. Constitution. And for the next four years, they gave approximately 80 speeches around the state of Texas on free market economics and the Constitution. They would go into a Rotary Club meeting, and while the people were having lunch, they would put five easels in the front of the room. And while people were eating, those five kids would write the entire U.S. Constitution by memory on those easels. And then they would give a half-hour patriotic speech on the Constitution and free market economics. They gave approximately 20 speeches a year for four years. 80 speeches in all. And let me tell you, by the time my son came out of high school, he felt passionate about free, about the Constitution, about free markets, about limited government. And I'll tell you, we have a responsibility as parents. The Word of God says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. God is going to hold us responsible for the way we guide our children. We've heard throughout the day about attacks on religion, attacks on this, attacks on this other. Again, let's look at history. The real champions of our revolution were the pastors. You ever heard of the Black Robe Regiment? The Black Robe Regiment were a series of pastors. There were long black robes. Many of them had the Continental Army uniform underneath the black robe. They would preach on Sunday, take off that robe, and with half the congregation, they would go out and fight for our independence. As a matter of fact, when Paul Revere made his famous ride, calling, the British are coming, Paul Revere was going to the home of a pastor by the name of Jonas Clark. And at the home of that pastor, there were two other people, John Hancock and Samuel Adams. That's where Paul Revere was going. One of the most feared individuals by the British Army was Jonas Clark. Because Pastor Jonas Clark, one of those preacher patriots, recruited more people for the Continental Army than almost anybody else. Where are those pastors today? Where are those pastors today? When we see our rights being eroded, and listen, we need to understand the foundations of what is being done. When you hear this attack on religion, it's not really an attack on religion. The fundamental basis is this. Socialism requires that government becomes your God. That's why they have to destroy the concept of God. They have to destroy all loyalties except loyalty to the government. That's what is behind homosexual marriage. It's really more about the destruction of the traditional family than about exalting homosexuality. Because you need to destroy also loyalty to the family. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to wrap up with the last few words of the Declaration of Independence, where these men said, relying upon the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Let me tell you, our life is under attack. We already saw what is happening with abortion. The same thing is happening at the other end with Obamacare. Obamacare is going to destroy the elderly. 
by denying care, by even perhaps de denying treatment on people that are in catastrophic sicknesses. Your treasure, let me tell you, this administration has both their hands in your pocket. They want to take everything you have and the money you have in your wallet is worth less and less and less every day. So your treasure is going to be evaporated. But let me tell you something. They cannot take your honor. So my time is over, but I want to leave you with this challenge. I want to challenge you to make a commitment together with me that we can say, I pledge my life. I pledge my fortune, I pledge my sacred honor to do everything I humanly can to restore this country to that shining city on a hill. If every one of us makes that commitment, we will take this country back. The book of Proverbs says in Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, people mourn. But it also says in Psalms 30 verse 5, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. If we all keep together, 